Hi everyone, this is Dr. Gail Carson. Welcome to Living Regret Free, a program that shows you how to live a better and more joyful life. As an added bonus, I invite you to listen to an introduction to my Mindset Matters program, which ties into this so well. Go to www.sobmindset.com. It's free and I know you will enjoy it. If you'd like to contact me personally, drop me a line at gailcarson13 at gmail.com or go to my website, www.spunkyoldbroad.com and sign up for my weekly newsletter. My guest today is Karen Steele. Now, who is Karen Steele? First and foremost, she hates labels, but what she does love and has plenty of is life experience. She's never stopped reaching for the stars since she was a child and has continued to expand her life experience through countless books, countless relationships, and countless careers, and it never ends. There's always another book to cause her to think in a new and unusual way, and there's always another relationship to cause her to see herself in a different light, and there's always another career to keep boredom at bay. She received her license to minister from a Bible college in Macon, Georgia, and formal education aside, Karen was saved by the 12 steps of Alcoholics Anonymous, and she found her way to the mountaintop through Unity Church, A Course in Miracles and the Teaching of Abraham. Karen's book, Church of Prophecy, is the culmination of her life experience. It was born through a spiritual experience that would not be denied until she became the messenger. Wow, Karen, that's a lot to, to think about. Welcome to the show. Thank you, Gail. It's a pleasure to be here. Well, you know, um, there's a lot of questions I want to ask you, but I'm limited by the time that we have today. So I'm going to start off by asking you, whatever possessed you to start a church for profit? Because most churches are not for profit. And they like that because of their status, you know, their tax status. But you started a church for profit. Where did that come from? Well, it, it actually, I was in the shower when that happened. <laughs> That's a good place for ideas, by the way, a shower. I agree. I agree. And it hit me like a ton of bricks. I said, oh, my God. Um the Church of Prophecy, and for the listeners, that's spelled P-R-O-F-I-T-S-E-A. There is a literally a sea of profit around us at all times, and we have to be open to it. Um, it came to me when because I was in an MLM program 20 years ago, the first and last one I was ever in, and I was also studying to be a minister. And the, the, it was so powerful to me to see that you could actually get rich by loving your neighbor. And that all goes hand in hand with commerce. And every, I mean, spirit is everywhere. Spirit is in everything. Spirit is in your money. All right. And so it just got, my teeth vibrated for a week. I was so excited when I got this idea. But I really do believe that, um, it's time for churches to put their money where their mouth is and to start giving back to the people um, that build the church. And this could be the evolution of anyone's religion. I call it the evolution of mine, but it could be the evolution of anyone's religion. I don't believe there will ever be a world religion in the, because we're all too diverse, we're too different, and we're unique, and we're wonderful. Um, but we should not all be thinking the same way. Um, well, that's true. But, that's very true. You know, but uh, I have to ask you, I mean, you talk about uh, we can all profit from our neighbor, I think is what you said. And I don't think a lot of people think that way. I mean, I think that's a very unusual way to project that. And of course, when you talk about a neighbor, it's not just your physical neighbor next door. I'm sure you're talking about neighbors everywhere. So, I mean, that is still unusual, isn't it? <laughs> yes. Yes, it is. <laughs> but the MLM, multi-level marketing, has been around a long time. And understanding the leverage, the leverage that you get um, when you are contributing to something like this and the church actually pays you back for growing the church. 
Well, uh, so, so you based it on an MLM model then? Is that yes, what I did. Yeah. Wow, that is really unique. So in our in our in our product is self actualization. Wow, I mean I, that is I, very unique, and I certainly know a lot of MLM people, and uh, I'm not sure they all think that way. They may say they do, but I don't know if they really do. Um, so why why if if you know if if we're talking about that kind of model and we're talking about the fact that we can profit from our neighbors, why do you think there are so many people in the world who are not happy or healthy or wealthy? Because they don't know who they are. So they've got to dig deep down inside themselves and ask a lot of questions. Well, the whole purpose of this church is to wake people up as to who they are. Uh, we are pure, positive, God force source energy that's who we are and the science backs me up on this the church of prophecy is really putting together science with religion and einstein said it better than anybody i know you know uh, religion without science is blind and science without religion is lame you know um yeah. they go together they really, really do. And science has been backing us up on the fact that we are the creators of our own reality for 100 years now. So how many people are in your church? And everyone. <laughs> ah, okay. So it's not, it's not a physical church. It is I, not. I go. It's something, it's a movement almost that I it belong is a to. Yes, ma'am. It is a movement. It's, it's waking people up to the power that is within them. It's waking people up to the fact that they create their own reality. Um, I would I would love to read you a poem. This poem just reminds me of your philosophy, Gail. Uh, I wrote this poem about 10 years ago. Um, it's, every child born is the light of the world. I believe this with all my heart. Okay, the poem says, life is good. It's supposed to be fun. Life is eternal and free. Wherever I go, whatever I do, I am my own legacy. I will return again and again to give birth to a new way of seeing, for I am a child of the universe, one whose source is well-being. We are all explorers and trailblazers sailing uncharted seas. Desire is the wind in our sails. Our passion summons the breeze. There is no call for humility. Give credit where credit is due. There will never be, in all eternity, another you. Wow, that is great. I do like that. I do like that. <laughs> this is and, the message. Yeah, Everyone. I can see. I can see that it is. And so how do you deliver this message? Um, by the book right now. <laughs> it was, it, it's been going through many in incarnations over the last 20 years. At one time, I was trying to do an actual church, and it, it wasn't right. Because when this came to me 20 years ago, it came to me as a an MLM church, and I just couldn't wrap my mind around it, and I was my own worst enemy. I kept getting in my own way. Well, um, that's what happens to most of us, so I can't <laughs> <laughs> yes. We do get in our own way. We we think too much, you know, rather than absolutely. taking action, we think too much. <laughs> that is absolutely correct. And then when I finally quit beating my head against the wall, trying to make it happen, um, I they got the idea to write the book. And I said, well, if this is the way I'm going to do it, this is the way I'm going to do it. Um, and I, it's just a message. That's all it is. Uh, and there's a lot of them out there. Um, I happen to think this one is very, very powerful. But you uh, also praise in your book entrepreneurship. So, I, oh, I, yes, absolutely. So why is that? Um, because happy, healthy, and wealthy is a package deal. And when you are happy, when you know who you are, you cannot know who you are or not be happy. That comes from within. The joy just bubbles up from within. When you are happy, you're going to be healthy. Your mind controls your body. And when you're happy, you're going to be healthy. And when you're happy and healthy, 
then you are ready for ideas. Then you're ready to open yourself up to the resources that the universe is pouring out on us every minute of the day. And that's what entrepreneurs do. They are the risk takers and they are the barrier breakers and they're the people who take chances. It's so funny because um, I know people feel like that. And I always say, I think entrepreneurs are, uh, well, I'm not going to say they're not risk takers, but they don't view themselves as risk takers. They just figure that's, that's the way it is. That's the way you do business. You do what you have to do to make it work. But you also um, call people genius creators and profit centers. So where does that come from? Because everyone is a genius creator of their own reality. And Einstein said it. All right. Are you ready for this? <laughs> okay. <laughs> Einstein said everything is energy and that's all there is to it. Match the frequency of the reality you want and you cannot help but get that reality. It can be no other way. This is not philosophy. This is physics. And that is how we create our own reality, by matching the frequency of the reality you want. I call it the law of attraction. It's the Unity Church calls it the law of mind action. Thoughts held in mind produce after their own kind. We are creating our own reality every minute of the day by the thoughts we think. Well, that is true. That is true. And uh, it's true. They say money is energy and they say um, uh, just everything is energy. I mean, it's all around you and it, it is what creates everything else. So I guess Einstein was right. Now, who am I to argue with Einstein? But so <laughs> You also uh, talk about a vibrational set point. Yes. That's, How is good, that that's, matching, that's matching the frequency, what that's all about. A vibrational set point. And we are vibrational beings. This is Einstein's friend, Max Planck, who did this over 100 years ago. And he said there's no such thing as matter. There's no such thing as matter. We are all empty space vibrating <laughs> on a certain frequency. And that is how, that's our vibrational set point. Wherever our mind is, whatever we're focused on, and focus is so important, what we're focused on. Are we focused on the best in the world? Are we focused on the best in ourselves? Are we focused on the best in others that we're working with? Where are we focused? That is our vibrational set point. And wherever we're focused, the universe is going to bring more of it. The law of attraction. Good or bad. In other words, it could be exactly. if, you're, if, you're, if you're always thinking negative thoughts and you're always anticipating that the worst is going to happen, it usually does. The law of attraction proves you right every time. And Henry Ford said it too. Whether you believe you're right or you're wrong, you're right. <laughs> that's, true. that's right that's right well you also I mean, um you know you say that mlm which uh uh you know most people think of as multi-level marketing uh is an acronym for making love manifest and yeah. you take the marketing out of mlm uh and if you do that doesn't it become a ponzi scheme isn't there supposed to be a product for it to be legal and that's why I say our product is self-actualization. Um, yes, not only that, but the gift that you give to the church is a love offering. No, Nobody is asking for this. It is a love offering given freely. And you're not guaranteed anything. You're not guaranteed anything other than you're going to be around people who are going to be creating their own reality and some of their genius just might rub off on you so you can learn how to create your own. So um, you you talk also about patriotism. That's a strong theme in your book. And you quote Adam Smith, who wrote the book, The Wealth of Nations in 1776. So why does patriotism play an important role in all of this? Uh, because I just believe that we live in the greatest country in the world. We're Freedom is actually taken seriously. Um, freedom is the, the basis of our being. I mean, we are freedom-seeking beings. And the wealth of nations, I love it so much because he talks about any individual selfishly pursuing his own good 
will be led as if by an invisible hand to achieve the greater good for all. And 